on Sailing Catalpa. We check into Timor Leste, Lee finds the problem with our dive compressor, does some maintenance, and we organise how our generator can get to us. There's no hanging over the water here with the crocodiles around, so we compromise to being over the deck. John, mm. we're going to see Jesus this morning. Okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got Mummy up and headed off to Cristo Rey. Cristo Rey here in Dili is a giant Christ statue standing 89 feet tall and constructed in 1996 as a present from Indonesia to East Timor. Timor-Leste was previously known as East Timor before they gained their independence in 2002 from Indonesia. This giant Jesus on the globe is accessible by a 590 step staircase and is situated at the end of Fatukuma Peninsula facing out over the ocean. 99% of the population in Timor-Leste are Christian, making it one of the most Christian countries in the world. The present of this statue was a failed attempt by Indonesia to stop East Timor from demanding independence. But the statue still stands and the views from above were pretty beautiful. After looking at the beaches below, we decided to head down and jump in the ocean for a swim. Then jump in a microlet back to Catalpa. We've uh, had a bit of a lazy day today. We've been uh, the girls are all got a bit of a cold, so it's been relaxing. But Shani was just up on the deck, and um, it's a bit rough outside. And a boat that's on a mooring way away it was I don't know where it was. It was pretty far away. Uh, is now drifting, and he's really close to us. He was only about two metres away just now, so we'll go up and see Lee just jump in the tender and we'll go and see what's happening. And thank goodness Mummy was on the deck. This ferry boat was heading straight for Catalpa. It wasn't long until the local boat guys were out on the scene. The strong winds had let this ferry loose and drifted a good 300 metres straight towards us. These guys jumped aboard, but they must not have had the keys to start the engine. Lee grabbed some rope and a machete and did his best to help the situation. More boats and more help arrived, but still no one seemed to be able to get the motor started. And every time we thought we were out of harm's way, the boat would make its way back over to scare the poop out of us.
The alley tenders were doing their best by ramming her away when finally one of them got her going. But as Lee said, it wasn't over yet. Until a guy grabbed Lee's knife to cut free the lines to get the boat away from us. And thankfully, they broke free and headed off. Hopefully, far, far away from here. And she's off. Bye bye. The boat was gone and we were out of danger, but we still had a problem. There was a line connected to something that could potentially be wrapped around our anchor chain. It was no way it was going anywhere by pulling it up by hand. So they tied on a float and thought best to handle this another day. So it looks like we aren't going anywhere just yet. So luckily Shani was up top and she saw this boat heading towards us that we actually could have avoided something right. terrible. That shouldn't be there. Yeah. I thought I thought I'd boat next to us, but... Good anyway, job, honey. Yeah, nearly got taken out and lost the mooring, but um, we're at the end of the run here, so if anyone else loses their moorings, if we've got southeast winds at the moment, but they seem to be coming from more than north, which is blowing all the boats our way. So hopefully she turns around to the southeast as predicted, and hopefully we don't see any more boats beside us. <laughs> And we don't get any closer uh, to this rock wall. A little bit concerned. They've dragged their block. They've dragged their block and it could have actually gone over, be on top or in front of our uh, anchor. So as long as we don't get fouled in the mooring, we should be okay. Or tangled up when we go to weigh anchor. So it is crocky waters here, but there is guys over there I noticed cleaning their hull. So. Hello. Yeah. Um, Mustn't be too many then. No, if it wasn't so windy I wouldn't mind moving anchor, but not ideal conditions to weigh the anchor when we're so close to a wall too. So this morning we're going to get our, pick up our generator because it's arrived in Dilly. It's very exciting. Excitement for the generator, but we are still fouled up. The boy that dragged the other day, or the mooring block is at the front of our boat, so I'm assuming they've uh, decided to drop their mooring on our anchor. So we're gonna uh, get the anchor up this morning and hopefully it's not too much of a tangle because we are in crocodile waters and I'm not too keen on getting in. He doesn't get in anyway, it would be me. Hold on. We excitedly went ashore to meet with Brian. And this is the legend that brought our generator all the way from Darwin, Australia to us here in Dilly. Hey Brian, Chantal. Chantal. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Brian and his family live here in Dilly after sailing here about a year ago. Joe and Brian, thank you so much for helping us out. You guys are awesome. Back we go, excited to swap out old Bluey for this shiny new red rocket. That's one happy captain right there. So we're just about to see if we can go and move this mooring, which apparently shouldn't be a mooring because they're 15 ton blocks, but unserviced mooring. So hopefully it's just a bit of uh, ground tackle and a swivel or something that's sort of sitting in the sand here and not around our anchor. So we're just going to move it. That was no good. 
these guys behind us are going to get a bigger boat and drag it away later. So. Uh, well. We got something really cool! We da, 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 da. <laughs> we got a new generator! Yep. So, it all worked out in the end. We were initially going to get one from Ambon, but we weren't sure if it was a Chinese copy or not, so we got one from home, Australia, um, which sort of worked because all our plugs are the Australian plugs, so we didn't have to modify anything with this. Um, and I can be pretty sure we've got a genuine one coming from Australia. Um, so that should do the job for now. Yeah, and we looked in... Hands. It's, uh, when we looked into the shipping, when we first got here, we thought, oh, we'll try and get one shipped here, and it was going to cost $1,500 on top of the generator, so $3,500 to get the generator here. So, it started off at the Honda shop in Darwin, then to Chantel's friends. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Hannah and Jeff, so much, because they actually had to drop the... Well, they didn't have to, but they did end up dropping the generator at five o'clock in the morning to the airport to Brian so he could bring it over on the plane. And um, his flight ended up getting delayed, but yeah, we're just really grateful. So thank you for doing that for us. Mm -hmm. And it got here safely and we just picked it up from Brian and massive thank you to Brian yep. and Joanna for getting it here. We actually didn't have to pay any taxes or anything on it. So <laughs> It was a big win. No um, even excess luggage. No excess luggage. So as this luggage. flight was delayed, they actually let him on with his uh, luggage at no extra cost. Yeah. And so we were very, very taxes. lucky. And a massive shout out to all the people that donated um, money to us getting this new generator. We're very, very appreciative. Thank you. <laughs> of that, yeah. So this wouldn't have been possible without you guys. So thank you so much. This is huge. Look at his face. <laughs> so, with it our is the EU 22i. So, with our new little Honda, our Rayman watermaker used pretty much every bit of our Kippors 2 kVA to get started. So, this is actually Honda's new um, generator, the 22i. So, it's got another 200 watts of power, which is not a lot in the scheme of things, but probably enough for our water maker to not uh, struggle as much on startup. Even though our water maker, I think, runs around 14, 1600 watts, the initial startup is definitely right on the 2 kVA mark. So, being 22, should be perfect. Thinking about the mooring at the same time, because we've got an issue there with the mooring that's potentially wrapped around our anchor line, which is an anchor in itself as a mooring. So the boat that was drifting towards us the other day is back and they're just trying to remove the anchor. Well the mooring line which isn't actually ended up being a massive anchor and we were just hoping it wasn't tangled around our anchor chain which I think it may be because we are spinning as we speak as they pull it away. Yeah it's wrapped around so Lee's up the front telling them that it is wrapped around and we don't want them to kind of pull anymore because it's going to take our anchor chain up as well. So this will be interesting. Woo. Yay! Good job! <laughs> Thanks guys! <laughs> so it was totally wrapped around our chain but it's just come free so it's good. Here is the culprit. Big one. It's a big anchor, yeah. After becoming free, we decided to pull anchor and move spots. So join us next time as Joe and Brian take us on an adventure into the mountains. Plus, we go to leave Dilly when something stops us. Yep, more broken things on Catalpa. Stay tuned, guys. Hi, guys. So that was episode 91. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to put a thumbs up and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Sailing Catalpa. Cheers, guys. See you next time. Bye. It all comes all thanks to you all.
thanks to y'all.